cool so uh we have uh, do we have new student no okay so we had studied about algebra of matrices in which the most important type of equation was multiplication as i told you so we learned how to multiply two matrices right and then we also understood one more concept which is transpose of a matrix so let's say we have a matrix a right? then its transpose will be written as a transpose a t or a dash so for a matrix for any matrix if i put this sign t or if i put this dash on the matrix then it is said to be the transpose of that matrix right and now what is the transpose of a matrix so we basically change rows with columns or columns with rows you can say anything we basically interchange rows and columns interchange rows and columns right so if your matrix was a i j that is i th row j th column m cross n m rows and n columns then it's transpose then it's transpose will have n cross n that is the number of columns will become the number of rows and number of rows will become the number of columns and the and your this element your this element will become a j i these suffix will also interchange with each other as you can see here let's take an example for more clarity in terms of a general so let's take an example in terms of general matrix right so let's say i have this matrix a which is a square matrix it can be anything first of all so okay i have this matrix c and this is not square this is three cross four okay so this element would be a11 so the order of this matrix is three cross four that is there are three rows so this is first row i'm filling up the first row with general elements so this would be a11 a12 a13 and a14 because there are four columns so the row would end up after writing of four elements right so this would be the first row then second row would be a21 a22 a23 a24 oh, my bad i should have used c for capital c again this is not a rule but it would be better if you represent it like this so that we do, we do not get confused after some operations or calculations oh my bad again so this would be c31 that is the element which belongs to third row first column this would be c32 this would be c33 and this would be c34 right now if i take transpose of this matrix c dash so <clears throat> this there are three rows hence the transpose will contain three columns because all the rows will be interchanged with columns so whatever you can see as a row here in c dash you will you will see that as a column so this first row c11 c12 c13 c14 will become your first column c11 c12 c13 and then c14 then your second row will become second column so this would be c21 c22 c23 c24 and then this would be c31 c32 c33 c34 now the order of this is 4 cross 3 now you can see if you are writing this matrix as c i j right with 3 cross 4 cij with 3 cross 4 so you put i is equals to 1 right you get you get four values for j 1 2 3 4 so c11 c12 c13 c14 then you put i is equals to 2 c21 c22 c23 c24 then you put i is equals to 3 in this c31 c32 c33 c34 right now let's check the basic representation or the general representation for this this will be written as cj now let's check whether we are correct or not right so what we can do is put i again here you have started with you have started with this right the first one constant then change all the values for j so if i want to write first row if i want to write first row 
then put i is equals to 1. If i is equals to 1, j can take three values now. Right? j can take three values now. So, <clears throat> if I if I put i is equals to 1, j would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this would be c11, c12, c13, c14. Right? Then again, c21, c22, c23, c24. So, the element which belongs to first row and first column would be c11. Then element which belongs to what? First row but second column. First row but second column. This would be c21. First row, second column. Right? So, this is cji if this is cij. That's, that is a basic representation. But for your understanding part, I have I am doing all these things. Otherwise, for questions, you just have to interchange rows with columns. All the time, just think about what can transpose do. Transpose will change the positions of the elements. Right? Well, let, let's take one more example. Okay, I want to show you something. I'll show you guys something. So let's take a practical example only. I mean, I'll give you values with this matrix. So I have this matrix for, uh, let's say this is what, P matrix. Okay. And this is a three cross three matrix. And these are, let's say, A1, A2, A3. Okay. okay. I'll give you values, as I said. Uh, let's just give me a minute. I'm about to open this camera. This is not working. Just give me a minute. So let's say we have this matrix P, which is one minus one and two. Then zero, three, and minus four. Then minus two, 10, and nine. So let's say we have this matrix P, which is a square matrix again. Okay? And all the elements are 1 minus 1, 2, 0, 3, minus 4, minus 2, 10, and 9. Now let's find out transpose of this matrix. What's the transpose? So first row will become first column. So this would be 1 minus 1, 2. Right? Second row will become second column, 0, 3, minus 4. And this would be minus 2, 10, 9. Can you qu quickly check both of them? Check both of them. Compare which elements did not change their positions. Can you quickly check that and tell me? What are the elements? Which elements in, the, in the both of these two matrices are at same positions? Like zero changed changed its position. It was here in P, but it's here in P dash. So it, the position has changed. What are the elements whose position hasn't changed? Haven't changed? One, three, nine. Can you tell me anything specific about these elements, Mahmoudi? Like one, three, and nine. All of these are diagonally diagonal elements, right? 
So these diagonal elements didn't change their position. Now, why did it happen? Think about it with a very simple mathematical logical answer. Why did it happen? What do we do in transpose? We interchange I and J, right? We interchange I and J. So AIJ becomes AJI. Now diagonal elements didn't change their position. Why? Yeah, oh, I got an answer, sorry. Yes, Fahad, correct. Because I is equal to J for all the diagonal elements. I and J both are equal for all. I mean, how do you write diagonal elements? AII. For AIJ when I is equals to J. So diagonal elements are A11, A22, A33. If you interchange them, it doesn't matter. The position remains same. So you can also notice this. Diagonal elements remain unchanged after taking transpose. Right? But you do know how to take a transpose, right? <clears throat> Is everybody okay with that? Can we proceed? Okay. If so, in that case, we would come back to multiplication and solve some of the problems for multiplication part. And also, we need to study some properties. Start with the problem first. Oh, yeah. So, first of all, this question. We have given you, I have given you a question in the last class. The product of two matrices is always commutative for diagonal of same order, for diagonal matrices of same order. So it's a statement written in your NCRT. Now they have written it, but I told you to check it. Had you done that? Why? Why is it happening? Product of two matrices is always commutative. That is, a B is equals to B A for diagonal matrices of same order. So we are saying that if you take two matrices A and B, right? If you take two matrices A and B, and let's say A matrix is a diagonal square matrix. If it's a diagonal matrix, though, it has to be a square matrix only. So let's say A is a diagonal matrix. What does that mean? That whatever order exists for A. It is a square matrix and a square matrix in which all the known diagonal elements are zero and diagonal elements have some value, right? Okay, let's write a general diagonal matrix of order N. I don't know what is the order of A, right? It can be of order two, it can be of order three. In fact, the result stated is valid for any order. There's, it doesn't matter what is the order of this diagonal matrix. If it's a diagonal, if there are two diagonal matrix of same order and you multiply them, they will be commutative. You take either AB or BA, both will be same. That is what we are saying. So I am taking, for generalization purpose, I am taking N cross N matrix, N cross N diagonal matrix. So let's say one matrix is A, right? So now diagonal elements mean all the diagonal elements will have some value and at least one will be known zero, right? And all the known diagonal elements will be zero. So I have these two matrices, A and B. So B is 
is also in cross end matrix. And B starts like this. Right? Then second row of A will be, sorry, B will be 0, B2. Now see, this will be the diagonal element. You can easily spot the diagonal elements if you know the basic rule for diagonal elements, which is the same row and same column. So this B2 will only take the second row and second column. Right? Oh, that's just. Yeah, sorry. So guys, if you have, you know, uh, first of all, we have started this assessment test series. So those who have been studied here uh, in the 11th class as well, and which we include Iram, Tharif, and Fahad. So we didn't have this concept in class 11, but we have, we have this new concept now that uh, we'll conduct an assessment test. Uh, Fahad, you were not present in the last class. I mean, you were present, but you left. Uh, the last. So you have to stay for the whole class for her, and you have to take an assessment test after every class. So the test will be of 30 minutes. It will consist some questions, six questions from topics which you have been studying in the class. Right. So in that we will get a better understanding of your concepts and where you are lagging and if how how can we help you further. So it's an experiment. We are trying to do something. Let's see if it can help us or not. Right. But it is for the betterment of you only. So everyone, please attend the test. Right. And this has to happen in most of the classes now. Okay. We have discussed this. We have put so much effort into this. We are trying to do something. So I want every one of you to support us and do this, attempt this. We'll We'll see results. We are also having a keen eye on this. So we'll see results and we'll update you. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So we have these two matrices. One matrix is A and one matrix is B. So I'm writing B first. This would look some, mm, sorry. So there are N rows and N columns in which all the diagonal elements have some value. I don't know what, at least one should be known zero, right? And all other elements are zero. Okay. So did you get the pattern in which I'm trying to follow this? This will go something like this. So all the diagonal elements are B1, B2, B3 up to Bn. And all the non-diagonal elements are zero. Similarly, for A, all the diagonal elements are these. A1, A2, right? And all the non-diagonal elements are zero, right? Now, there's another notation for di diagonal matrix, which I want to tell you. You don't need to write this again and again like this, because this is a cumbersome process. You don't want to write a general matrix like this. So what we have done in place of this is, we have a nice, beautiful representation of diagonal matrix. Or, sorry. Yeah, so it can be written as A, and here you say diagonal, which means that it's a diagonal matrix, whatever we are writing, and diagonal, which consists A1, A2, A3, up to 
in. It tells you everything which you need to know. It means that it is a diagonal matrix and however number of elements are present, that should be the order. Because the number of elements in diagonal is equal to the number of row is equal to the number of column for a diagonal matrix. For a square matrix, rather, there are three diagonal elements in three cross three. There are two diagonal elements in two cross two. So there are n diagonal elements. It means that the order is n cross n. So it tells us everything. Right? And now this B is again a diagonal matrix, which is B1, B2, Pn. Obviously, this, the order is n cross n. Right? Now I want to ask you guys one question first. Uh, has anybody done this? Has anybody thought about this? And uh, do you have any idea to share? I mean, we will do it. Don't worry. But maybe someone has tried for taking n is equals to two. That is, maybe someone has multiplied two 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 cross two matrices and then checked for a, b, and b apart. I don't know. I just I'm just asking you this. Have you thought about it? If someone has, then you can share. You have thirty seconds. And also this class has to be engaging. Uh, feel free to ask doubts as well as share your thoughts. I'll keep up nagging. I'll keep asking you. You will have to respond. At some point, wherever you feel comfortable and whenever you feel like you can tell me something, whether it's wrong or right, that is a different ball game altogether. I don't, we don't care about that. We will think about that. We will try to... We will try to have a rational approach to the problems. If we are solving problems, then it's good. But we'll keep trying. That is the motive. Okay, cool. Then in that case, we should multiply this A cross B, right? And B cross A. We'll find out both of them. So let's find out A cross B, right? So to find out A cross B, we have to multiply rows of A with columns of B, right? We know the multiplication problem. Now let's multiply first row with first column, first row of A with first column of B. So if I multiply first row of A with first column of B, this first element gets multiplied with first element, right? Which is A1, B1. And now see, all the other elements are zero. So this is nothing but a1, B1. Right? Now, first row gets multiplied with second column. This has A1. A1 into 0, 0. Then again, all the elements are 0. Subsequent elements are 0. So, this is nothing but 0. First row with third element, again, all 0. Because it has A1, then it has 0 here. Corresponding element is 0 for A1. And if it has B3 here, the corresponding element is zero here. Okay. So the whole multiplication plus sum wala theory is zero for all the parts, in fact. So first row gets multiplied with each column and only yields an answer for the first column. First row with first column, only. Otherwise, all the other entries are zero. If you multiply first row with second column, third column, fourth column, nth column, any column, all the elements are zero. You can check that. And that will happen. Because here the first element is non-zero in the first row. First element is non-zero, which is A1. And here, in all the columns, first element is zero. All the columns, first element is zero. So zero into A1 will be zero. And then all other elements are zero, so which makes all Everything zero. Similarly, if you multiply second column with first, sorry, second row, this row with first column, so zero into B1 is zero, then all other are zero because first column contains all zeros. So this is zero. Then again, you multiply second row with second column. This time, you get zero into zero plus A2 into B2, which is A2 B2. Then all other elements are zero. And this will keep on. Did you get the pattern? Can you tell me the third term? Third row. Anyone? 
anyone? Okay, so third row here is uh, 0, 0, A3, 0, and then 0. And you know the third column here. Or well, first column, second column, third column, all the, all the columns. So you'll have to fill this third row. Can you help me with that? Anyone? Uh, yeah. Yes. So we are multiplying now. We, we, we are trying to fill how many? Second row of A cross B. Right. So to find out second row of A cross B, we have to take second row of A and multiply it with each column. Right. Now let's find out first element of second row. So second column with first row. When you multiply second row, sorry, second row with first column, so 0 into B1, 0 plus A2 into 0, 0. And all the other elements are 0, obviously. So the first element is 0. Then you multiply second row with second column to get the second element. Then second row with third column to get the third element. Second row with fourth column to get the fourth element, right? Subsequently like that. Now if I multiply second row with second column, so this is 0 into 0, which is 0, plus A2 into B2, which is A2, B2, plus all the other elements are 0, because this is 0. And then again, this is also 0. All the elements are 0. So this is just A2, B2. The second multiplication gives you value A2, B2. First multiplication is 0, and all the other multiplication after second multiplication are also 0. There will be n multiplication each time if you figure out, because there are n elements. So first row, first, first column, when first row gets multiplied with first column, there will be n multiplication, first element, second, second, third, third, right? So when you multiply second row with second column, you have n multiplication, but only the second multiplication gives you value A to B2. Otherwise, all the other multiplications are giving you value 0. Did you get it? Yes, I got it. Okay, now fill up the third row. Everyone. So third row, you have to multiply third row of A with first column of B, then second column of B, then third column of B, and subsequently with all the columns of B. Now let's take third column of, sorry, third row of A. You have taken third row of A, multiply it with first column. 0 into B1 is 0. And all the other elements are 0 because all other elements are 0. So we have to focus on these two things only. When we are multiplying rows with columns, there is one element in row which is non-zero and there is one element in column which is non-zero. Right? Just focus on those two elements. Who are they multiplying with themselves? If they are multiplying with themselves, these non-zero numbers, they will yield some answer. Yeah, right? But if they are multiplying with zero, they'll get zero. They'll become zero. Right? So third row with first column, everyone is zero because there is no multiplication of A3 and B1. A3 is on third position. B1 is on first position. They can't get multiplied. If they can't get multiplied, then they will get multiplied with some other zero. Hence all zero. Now third row with second column. Now this A3 is on third position. B2 is on second position. Mm, they cannot get multiplied. Corresponding, we multiply corresponding elements, hence zero. Don't even think about it. Just apply the logic. Again, third row with third column. Now, third row with third column. A3 is on third. B3 is also on third. In this case, we will get only one known zero answer, which is A3, B3. And similarly, all other are zero. Did you get the pattern? Iram? Iram, Faija, did you get this pattern? No? Oh, Iram is not in the class. Okay. And Faiza, did you get it? Yes, sir. 
Now, when I multiply B cross A, you will get the same. You can check it here only. If you take first row of B, now finding out B cross A, you will take rows from B, columns from A. First row gets multiplied with first column. The answer is B1, A1, which is same as A1, B1. Because these are scalar quantities. They are numbers. 2 into 3 and 3 into 2. Both are same. Yes, they are same. So when you multiply B cross A, you get the exact same result as A cross B. Because the logic is same. You will only get a non-zero entry if you multiply two non-zero numbers. Now B1 will multiply it with A1. Again, you will take first row with second column of A, first row with third column of A. You will see all the elements are zero. So this is how this is why two diagonal matrices of same order have a commutative multiplication because the answer is always. And also, see, this is very, if A and B are these, you can write AB directly. How? AB is also a diagonal matrix, which will be written as just the product of their corresponding diagonal elements. A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, A4, B4. And last one is A and B. So multiplying two diagonal matrices is very simple. <coughs> and we can... Solve it like this. Just a minute, please. Uh, yeah, before moving on further, let me first tell you some of the properties of this multiplication of matrices and then we'll move on further with some questions. So, properties are very simple. One you have already seen, which is the most, I would say, very important property. Always remember this. Cannot forget this. No. That AB in general AB is not equals to BA. Matrix product is not commutative. So it matters whether you are writing AB or BA. It matters which is first and which is second. The important thing is this. How do we call it mathematically? This map, the order of the matrix matters. Order, order money, the positions of the matrix. So in case of multiplication, order matters. That is how you have placed them. That matters. Right. Now, talking about some of the general properties. So, let's say we have this A of B plus C. Right. So, we have this we have this matrix A which gets multiplied with B plus C. Now, A can go inside just like your scalar multiplication. But again, the order matters. A is coming first. Right. Or A is pre-multiplied. We can also see this. Pre-multiplication. I'll show you another thing. Multiplication. Yes. We call it pre-multiplication. Now, if I write it like this, this is post-multiplication. So always remember. Always. 
always check whether it's pre-multiplication or post-multiplication, right? So you can multiply this A, but you have to write A first and then be AB plus AC. While in this case, you can do with this BA plus CA, but you can't change their order. I mean, not, we can't change. It matters. Right? So, matrix product is not commutative, then we can, and now this property is also known as distributive property. Value. So, multiplication is distributive. You can distribute the multiplication. Distributive property. This was commutative property. Now, again, we have associative property as well, which means that if you have the multiplication of three matrices, obviously you can multiply however matrices you want, just the condition must be, if you are multiplying A, B, C like this, then the number of columns in A must be equal to number of rows in B. Then number of columns of B must be equal to number of rows, uh, number of rows of C. Yeah. So if you are multiplying matrices like this, they must follow the order. Because why I'm saying this? Because it doesn't matter whether you are multiplying A or B first and then multiplying this whole with C or multiplying B or C first, then multiplying with A. If you are saying that we can multiply these three matrices like A cross B cross C, it only means that we can multiply AB first or BC first. We can multiply anyone. That doesn't change the final answer. And also that columns of first matrix should be equal to the rows of second matrix then only we can multiply them. So columns of A must be equal to columns of B, uh, rows of B and columns of B must be equal to rows of C. And this property is known as associated. And then I told you already that I, these are for some matrices A, B and C. Obviously for all the matrices A, B and C, whatever the matrix, matrix is. Now, I told you i is just like 1. So, ai or ia, both are same. i is commutative with everyone because i is like 1. You multiply i with someone, that will be the same matrix. Right? So, ai is equals to ia. Right? ai is equals to ia is equals to a. a is just like 1. Just like you can say that 2 into 1 or 1 into 2, both are same and the values too. Similarly, we are saying that if you multiply i post multiplication or whether pre multiplication, it doesn't change the matrix. The matrix is same. So if you multiply a with i pre or post, it remains i. This is also known as multiplicative identity. I guess, yeah. Multiplicative identity, they have given the word. So we have these some nice properties related to your <coughs> multiplication. Now we have some questions. I want you guys to solve first of all some of the questions. So let's take out, do you guys have NCRT right now? Is there someone who doesn't have NCRT? Just raise your hand. I'll dictate the question. Otherwise, please take out the NCRT. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Cool. In that case, we have this question. Let's solve the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, assume X, Y, Z, W, and P. Okay, write the question. Uh, you can uh, just, I want to do It's okay. Still, I'm writing the question.
So this is the question. If assume x, y, z, So the question is, assume x, y, z, w, and p. Assume x, y, z, w, and p are matrices of order 2 cross n, 3 cross k, 2 cross p, n cross 3, and p cross k. Harif and Mamudin, you can get down your hands. P cross k, respectively. Now, choose the correct answer. So there are five matrices whose orders are given to you. Some unknown variables are there. Some unknowns are there in the order. You will have to find out these unknowns. Right? And we are giving you some questions. So we are asking the restriction. The restriction on N, K and P so that so that Py plus Wy will be defined. And the questions are given, was, sorry, options are given to you. K is equals to 3, P is equals to N. These K is arbitrary. Arbitrary money key can take any value. P is arbitrary. P is arbitrary. And K is 3. And D option is K is 2, P is 3. Yes. How it can be solved? What's the answer? Everyone. And before telling me the final answer, I just want to ask you if anyone have an idea how to solve this. Just basics. How are you solving it? The logic part. And then solve. So tell me as soon as you get how to solve. I will make you understand the questions. We have given five matrices with some orders. Right? We have to tell the restriction. Restriction means we have to tell about N, K, and P. Now, how can we tell about N, K, and P? We, we have, you have to give, give me some condition to define N, K, and P. So now the condition is given to you. Condition is this. P, Y plus Q, Y will be defined. Means that you can multiply P with Y as well as you, you can multiply W with Y. Now, if you can multiply two matrices, you know some things about their order. You know the rule. So apply the rule, right? Apply the basic knowledge of addition and multiplication, and then try to solve for N, P, and K, whatever. Try to compare the orders. Now I've given you the enough hint. 
Itu soal. Yeah, what's the answer? Okay. It has to be Where is this? Ah, correct. Father, oh, it's correct. Yeah, anyone else? Faiza, Mamati, Karif, Austin. No? Okay, try to take this one then. So it is given that PY plus WY is defined. And they are asking you about NK and P. Now you are saying if PY is defined, if PY is defined, now how can PY be defined? So P has an order. Similarly, Y has an order. Let's write their order as well. So P is P cross K into we want to multiply with this y y is 3 cross k now if that is possible if you want to multiply p into y it means that k is, has to be 3 if you want to multiply p cross y p y if you want to find out p y then k has to be 3 no did everyone get it Yes, sir. Number of rows, the number of columns of P must be equal to the number of row of Y, right? Now, similarly, if WY exists, now the order of W is N cross 3. And similarly, the order of Y is 3 cross K. So if WY exists, 3 has to be equal to 3, which is already true. So this exists already. This didn't give us any condition. No. It is, it is, it is telling us 
I am already, you can multiply W with Y. The order is given such that you can multiply W into Y. But for P cross Y, you have to take K3. Right? Now again, one more condition is there. You are adding these two. So if you are adding these two, then their order must be same. The order of PY and order of QY must be same. So the final order for this would be, let's check this. So final order for this would be P cross K into 3 cross K. So K and 3 has to be equal, then the order would be P cross K, right? And final order for this would be N cross K. So if PY plus WI exists, it means what? This P cross K has to be equal to N cross K which means that P is equals to N. These two results are important. Right. So K is equals to three is definite. Then only we PY can be find out. PY is possible to find out. And P is equals to N because PY plus WY, there are addition of two matrices in the world. Right? Now find out second part. If N is equals to P, then order of the matrix 7x minus 5z. Answer for question number second. These two are different questions. Don't go there. Don't think that you have to relate first and second part. No. Guys, what's the answer for second part? You know the order for X and order for Z. 7X will be have same order. 5Z will have same order. If you are subtracting them, their order has to be same. So tell me the final order for 7X minus 5Z. Okay, what is the order for 7x? Whatever is the order for x, which is 2 cross n. So 7x has an order 2 cross n. Then 5z has an order, whatever is the order of z, which is 2 cross p. Now they are subtracting them. 
O can only subtract when their order is same. It's given that n is equals to p. If the n is if n is equals to p, then obviously I can subtract that because the order is same. And 7x minus 2z will also have either you can say 2 cross n or 2 cross p because n and p are same. N and p are same, and the order of their subtraction will be same, whatever is the order for x and z. So answer is b. In the first case, the answer was a. In the second case, the answer is b. Okay. So there will be some questions which will be based on order, and then there will be another questions which will be based on multiplication problem. Right. Now I want you guys to solve some more questions for multiplication. It's not that easy. So I'm giving you one question. You have to find. You have to find an expression for. So solve this. You come to these questions again. Okay, remember this. Right now, we are telling you to do something to in the question. We will come to these questions again in some time. Matrix is a big chapter. I have to go patiently with this. But we will come to these questions again and again. So, we are given a matrix if A is equals to 1, 0, 2. 0, 1, 2, and 2, 0, 3. Right? Then, the question can be of two types. Two types. Either type 1, either they'll ask you to prove something. Like in this case, I'm giving you prove that some, 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 prove that some expression is equals to O or something, they'll tell you something. They'll tell you to prove some expression or type 2. Find the value of, or either they will say, find the value of A cube minus 6A square plus 7a plus 2y. So either they will tell you, they will give you an expression in A, an expression in A, and they will tell you to prove it equals to 0, or they will tell you to find the value of some expression. Question belongs to two types. Now how to solve this? Fatafat, first we will understand quickly that how to solve it mathematically. Question is very easy. Nothing very fancy about it. Just, just know some basic terms. So first of all, what, what do we mean by a cube? Or rather a square. Let's start with a square. Powers of a matrix. Oh, my bad. I would like to get this and write this. Power of a matrix. Very simple concept. But we can take the power of a matrix. Now how? Power of a matrix means that A square means we are multiplying A with A. The power concept is value. Because if you multiply A with A, you get A squared. Similarly, if you multiply A square with A, it becomes A cube. Similar way, if you are taking A to the power n, so you are basically multiplying a and then. this concept exists you can find out the power of any matrix right and then there are general rules if you have a to the power m to the whole power n then it would be a to the power mn right Any matrix to the power one is that matrix itself. 
and also any matrix to the power zero is either not defined or you can say it is i. Like two to the power zero is one. Similarly, eight to the power zero is i. But in we we don't use this in general. Right, and there are other rules as well, like a to the power m into a to the power n would be a to the power m plus n. So you can find out the values for powers. You can find out the power of any matrix. And just one more thing. You have already listened about this term, polynomial. So polynomials are those expressions in which the power of variable is always a whole number. For example, if I write a polynomial, so its general form can be fx. fx is the name of the polynomial, right? And it can be written as a0 x to the power n plus a1 x to the power n minus 1. I'll make you understand this, what I'm saying. By the way, you should know about this because you have studied polynomial in class 9th or 10th. 9th and 10th both. Yeah. But it's okay. Uh, let's focus on this. A n minus 1 into x plus a n. Right. So this is a polynomial. Now, what, the, what, what, the, what do we mean by this? We have these a0 not equal to 0. a0 cannot be equal to 0. And a1 so like a and the, whatever these values are, these are coefficients, basically. These are real values. But in which there is one condition that first coefficient or the coefficient of highest power cannot be equal to zero, right? And all the powers of x must be non-negative. Power of the variable must be non-negative integer. The power always has to be an integer. x to the power 4, x to the power 3, x square. So all these expressions are polynomial in which the power of variable, power of variable is a whole number. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 can be anything. It shouldn't be in fraction. And it should not be non negative. It should not be negative. Right? All these animal, all these uh, expressions are known as polynomials. Right? Now, we can also write a matrix polynomial. What is the difference between a matrix polynomial and a normal polynomial? You just replace your variable. You just replace your variable x with some matrix A. In that case, it is a matrix polynomial. Then this becomes a n minus one. This would be a. Now see here, this is a n. This is a scalar quantity. This can take value 2, 3, 1, 0, 5, 7. Right. In place of when we were talking about polynomials in a variable, it was okay. But now we are talking about in terms of matrix. How can you matrix? How can you add a matrix with a scalar? If it's just a n, this equation is wrong because this is a matrix. This is a matrix, and this is a scalar. How how can you add these two? How can you add these two? What is the result of this? No, nothing. Because the, these dimensions are not same. This is a matrix. This is a scalar quantity. This is not a number. No, not a number. So you can't add a n with this. So in place of a n, we write a n into i. Because i is just like 1. I would not change anything. So this is an expression 
which involves matrix and powers of matrix. In fact, the powers where the powers are all whole numbers. So this is known as a matrix polynomial. Now, why did I talk about this? Because we have both of these expressions, powers of A and matrix polynomial. So in this case, in the given question, we have a matrix A and also a given polynomial, which is A cube minus 6 A square plus 7 A plus 2 I. We have to find out this value. How do we do that? Very simple. We are given A. We will find out A square. We will find out A cube. We will find out all the possible things which are needed for the expression. So first I need a cube, then I need 6a square, then I need 7a, then I need 2i. I will find out all of them and put here and find out the value. This is calculated, just calculated. Nothing very fancy, conceptual or too hard concept, no, nothing. Yeah, it will be calculated. We'll have to, you, you will take some time to solve this, but it's doable. <clears throat> so we have A, we will find out A cube, A square, and then we'll put these values to get the answer. Okay, I want someone to write this expression as well as A cube, because I'll ask you. I mean, I'll solve this then. Uh, has somebody written? Faiza, have you written the question? Yes. Okay. Please help me out when I will ask you. Okay. Now let's solve the given question. So, what is the matrix, Faisal? A. A cube minus six A square. Okay. Plus seven A. Plus two I. See, this is the equation. This is the equation which we need to, or expression. Now, what is the matrix A? 1, 0, 2, I guess. Have you written this? If somebody has, please help me fill this. 0, 1, 2, and 2, 0, 3. Thank you. Okay, we have A. We have this equation whose value or expression this expression or matrix polynomial. I'll write this as F A. We have to find out the value of F A. We know what is A, right? To find out F A. Okay, so to do that, do that, we need to find out A square. 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 2, 2, 0, 3. So this would be <clears throat> 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 2, 2, 0, 3. So first row with first column, that would give me 1 plus 4, 5. First row with second column would give me, I guess, zero. first row with third column would give me 2 plus 6, 8. Then second row with first column, would give me 4. Second row with second column would give me 1. Second row with second column, third column would give me 8. <coughs> Sorry. It's okay. You, you solve at your own pace. Third row with first column would be 8. I'm writing this directly. I'm multiplying a square with a. And I'm not writing these two matrices. I'm just writing the product directly.
8 plus 2 10 plus 24 35. That would be a cube. We need to find out f of a, which is a cube minus 6a square plus 7a plus 2y. So that would be 21, 0, 34, 21, 34, 34, 0, 55 minus. 6 times of, so I am I, going to multiply 6 with this on a square. This would be 30, 0, 48, 24, 6, 48, 48, 0, 78. Then plus 7a, so this would be 7, 0, 14. Then this would be 0, 7, and 14. Then this would be 14, 0, and 21. And then plus 2i, which would be 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2. So the final answer would be, now we can add all, I mean, apply all the corresponding elements and apply all the respective operations. So 21 minus 30 minus 9, minus 9 plus 9 is 0. You can check this. So this would be 21 plus 7, 28 plus 2, 30, 30 minus 30 is 0. Then 0 minus 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0. 34 minus 48, so 34 plus 14, Minus 48 is 0. Okay. See, the answers are coming out as 0. So it may be possible that the expression for proving was same. I have taken random experiment, uh, random, I have taken random. 20 minus 24, minus 4. Yeah, see, this was in the correct matrix. 1 plus 7, 8 plus 2, 10, minus 6, 4. Well, let's solve this. That will be the one for the mat matrix polynomial. In this case, this expression will be equal to zero 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 minus four four zero 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 zero. But in most of the cases, they will either give you a statement for proving, which will always prove out equal to zero only, or they will give you to find out some value of expression. Most of the cases are proving only. Right? So that is how you can solve a given matrix problem. Right? Now you can First of all, you will have to solve the whole 7.2 exercise. We are not going on, sorry, 3.2 exercise. We are not going on 3.3 right now because we haven't dispersed much of the transpose here. I wanted you guys to be better with multiplication. You saw some of the examples. We have covered some other varieties as well. So I want you to apply some of the questions and apply whatever you have learned today in the class. So solve. 3.2. In the next class, we'll have, I'll, I'll, I, mean, I mean, I'll teach you two, three topics. So be ready that you are, you, you must be ready with all these stuff which we have discussed here because this, will, this has to use, we'll have to use all of this in the next classes, right? These are the basics. Now we'll start doing things. Up to this point, up to the multiplication part or transpose part even, we are just we, we were learning the basics of matrices. We were learning how to apply operations, how to, what can we do with matrices. Now we will start doing what, what can we do or what are the uses, other uses of operations of matrices.
right? But all of this will be based on these properties only, which you are not there, right? So finish this second exercise. Now, other than that, uh, well, we do this. Just a moment. I think we have solved some of the questions from this. I mean, you must have solved some of the questions from this. So, okay. Uh, I want everyone to solve this. Then this, this, you may not be able to solve first yet, but try this. Just a minute. Three point one and one point three. Okay, after this, fifteenth. Then 17th, 20th, 21st as well. So we haven't solved this 21st type of question yet. And first as well, which I have given you in this chapter. So we haven't solved these type of questions, but I've given you these two questions. Let's try to solve them as well. Also solve 22. 